Hi folks, in this video I built a new 58cm lightweight foam RC plane based on the A10 Warthog. It will have twin 38mm EDF jets. You may have seen my previous video where I tested out the EDFs in Savage Bobber. Well now I'm ready to build the A10. I downloaded this plane from the internet. This was all I had to go on. I decided to make some changes to hopefully make it fly better. And this included increasing the wing sizes moving the wing forward slightly and moving the fan jets forward. The aeronautical engineer in the family had had great success using printing foam to make box section fuselages which turned out very light and very strong. I decided to use this technique for the A10 and I would use plywood to reinforce the sections that needed extra strength. For the wing I decided to try it as technique of cutting slits and putting PVA glue with thin strips of tissue to get a nice aerofoil shape. I used the rig from the Magnum Reloaded to hold the wing in place while the glue dried. I glued the two halves of the wing together using 5mm Aerodyte. I started gluing in the formats for the fuselage and making sure that the wing fitted, but I decided that the tail was a little bit weak, so I added some more plywood reinforcing there. Time to cut out the tail sections. I've started working on the elevator and rudder surfaces. For the elevator, I'm going to use this carbon rod which comes through to this horn here. And for the rudders, I'm mounting the servo here and that will connect directly to the moving rudder surfaces. My goal with this build was to have a flying weight of less than 100 grams. The A10 is coming together. Before closing up the fuselage, the next step was to transfer the radio gear from the Savage Bobber that I'd been testing it in. See my previous video where I test out the EDFs in my Savage Bobber. I needed to get the approximate position so I could get the CG right. I did a bit of googling to see how I could connect the twin rudders. I glued in this panel to mount the elevator servo and the receiver. I'm using the styling cues from this larger A10 that I acquired through the Indoor Flying Club. I glued on a nice soft shock absorbing polystyrene nose cone and made a hatch for the battery bay. I then worked out how I was going to connect the EDFs to the fuselage. I found the culprit for my crash on the first flight. It was a loose wire in the plug on the right hand side fan jet, so I've since replaced this plug. Now to install the fan jets on the fuselage. I made a hatch which I could attach the clamps that hold the fan jets in place. The weight came to 90 grams so far with the 500 million power battery and 100 grams with the 800 million power battery. And there we have it, ready for a test flight. All packed up on the bike and ready to go. I'm here at the park. It's a chilly but lovely morning for doing the maiden on the A10. Uh, the A10 fitted neatly inside the carry box that I made for the EPP Spirit so hopefully it's made the trip okay without any damage and I'm about to put it together and give it its first fly. So I've got the CFG about there, I've got a 500 million power 1S battery in my little hatch here uh, which is not very heavy, I've got an 800 million power battery if the CFG proves to be a problem got both my fan jets working, differential throttle, a little bit of mix of rudder, rudder, elevator, we're all set to go. Let's see how she flies. Oh, very touchy elevator. Okay, I'll just see if I can bring it in without crashing it. Okay, I've just put a, quite a bit of expo on the elevator and reduced the amount of control because it was far too powerful before. Should I get height? Looks like it's a bit tail heavy, causing it to be unstable and duck and dive all the time. And gliding now. Oh. I've added a bit of nose weight. I 
think that's slightly better. Turns out the beeping was a low voltage alert on the transmitter. When I was revving up the EDFs, the voltage was dropping quite low. Okay, I've um, put a bit more down trim in. Whoa. Okay, cut the throttle, see how it glides. The 800 milliampere battery in, which brings the center of gravity forward quite a bit. Flying much better with that better centre of gravity. Wow, it's actually flying. You see those wings flexing though with that extra weight. Oops, we've lost control completely. Oh, that was lucky. Oops. Not able to do left turn for some reason. Better bring it in. Wow, that smashed it. Well, during that last test flight, I lost the ability to turn left. And I think it's because the left hand fan jet had come loose and was pointing to the right. It was flying really well with the improved C of G, but it put quite a wing loading on. And when it came in, it landed quite hard and it just snapped off the wing. So back to the drawing board, I think. Yeah. I'm on my way to the park, day two, to do some more test flights with the ATN Warthog. Uh, yesterday, after heavy landing, the, one of the wings broke, so I've re enforced that with a 1mm ply midsection and I've covered the top of the wing with the tissue. I've reinforced with watered down PVA, which has added a little bit of weight to the wing, but it should make it a lot more resilient to crashes. Also, I've secured the EDF that came loose yesterday and was pointing inwards which made left turns very difficult. I nearly crashed into a tree because of that. And I've also moved the EDF slightly forward to move the centre of gravity forward so I can use the 500 million power battery without a counterweight. So we'll see how those mods go. Going to fly it with the 500 million power battery with no counterweight. I'm going to test out uh, gyro as well. You're going to try that with gyro on. Flying with gyro on doesn't seem to make any difference. I've just added a little bit of counterweight to bring the central gravity forward. The plane's getting very wet, unfortunately. Struggling to keep it in the air. Doing a bit of down trim. Cutting the throttle slightly. Now I'm trying to fly it with just the differential throttle. Just seeing how that compares with flying with the rudder. It's flying with the differential throttle. Now try flying with the rudder. Whoa, very jerky. Okay, just see how it glides. Not too bad actually. Oh! Oh, something happened then. Suddenly dived for no reason at all. 
This last crash reminded me of the Boeing 737 MAX pilots who had nosedive issues when they had a sensor from a bad input. I'm not quite sure what caused my dive in this case. I suspect it might have been the gyro, a low voltage issue with the receivers. I did notice, however, that the wing actually folded in before it hit the ground halfway through the nosedive. The wings were somewhat weakened from the dampness from all the wet grass around, which would not have helped. This resulted in a scrunched up nose and a broken wing. I did, however, glue it all back together, but in the meantime I planned to build a brand new wing from scratch. After the flight tests with this prototype A10, I planned to do some rebuilding from the lessons learned. Before I was happy with the magnum reloaded, I rebuilt the fuselage once and the wing and undercarriage twice. It's looking like the A10 may require a few revisions before I'm happy with it. I need to reduce the flying weight and strengthen it in certain areas. These are my proposed changes. The printing foam box fuselage section was nice and strong, but this time I'll reinforce it with 1mm ply instead of 1.5mm ply. This should be strong enough, but will be lighter. I will rebuild the wing with a greater aerodynamic curve to give it more strength. Also, I will cover both sides with tissue and watered down PVA to give it strength like I did with my Magnum Reloaded. I will also spray paint it so that it doesn't get weakened when it gets wet. I will also mount both servos midsection so as to bring the centre of gravity further forward. And finally, I will add undercarriage so I can do takeoffs and landings indoors. I was surprised the delicate tail sections didn't break during all my crashes. I thought they would be first to go. So I'll probably leave them the same. What's coming up? Well, I guess I'll be doing some 18 rebuilding in the next few days. Also, I've just received all the radio parts for the brushless DMFE racer that I'm planning to build. So I'll be able to start that shortly as well. And as usual, if you would like to track my projects, consider subscribing to Dave's Fun RC then you'll get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.